the not so bad, the really bad, the good. And in that order. Salamnias have a love-hate relationship with my climate here in southern Spain. During the summer it's a little bit too dry and I have to miss them a lot. They are just on plain lava rock in very airy baskets. Now my low humidity makes me have to miss them a lot and it is possible that the little structures rot out. And well, where they hang on the west side sometimes I don't pay attention to them enough because with the warm dry winds everything dries out relatively quickly however scale will also take advantage of that kind of environment lots of nice misting and with a nice breezy place all the little critters can fall on them and i don't pay attention so my telumnia struggled when i noticed a scale infestation a little bit too late for some not too late for others and that's what i want to talk to you about today the hate relationship is basically my winter Tulumnias do not like to go below 16 degrees. If they can stand it for one night, you'll get away with it. And if you do that night after night after night, they are going to suffer. The anthocyanin that you will see on my Tulumnias is because of cold stress. Some of them don't have that same appearance and some of them have it more pronounced than others because there's red in their blooms. Thank you so much for watching this video. If as you watch it, you get some value out of it, please do me a solid like the video. If you haven't subscribed, follow the journey of my Tolumnias as we're trying to keep them alive through the winter of 2023. It's a reoccurrence. I always have this year in, year out. The scale infestation, that was my bad. I dropped the ball there. However, now that they're hanging at eye level every single day, I make sure that I go through even if I think it's just a spot that I addressed the other day, I am going to treat it with alcohol again. So we're going to start off with my Tolumnia Red Devil. You can see where there is a little bit of scale damage on her, but the fans are pretty plump. Yes, we're going in order of the okay to the very bad to the almost dead, and we're going to bounce back and end this video on a positive note. I've got a surprise. Anyway, Red Devil is doing okay. The root growth is phenomenal. The new growth is also looking really nice. It's holding on. Super pleased about that. What we see with regards to desiccation in the back, the curling of the leaves, that is an old fan. That doesn't have me concerned, even though for Tolumnia fans out there that are used to seeing beautiful green lush Tolumnias, this might look alarming. In my case, I'm okay with this. You can see how stressful it is in my climate during the winter to keep Tolumnias happy. So I will settle for what I'm seeing on my Red Devil. That looks good to me, at least for the survival impact of the coming months. And as I'm talking on the underside of the leaf of the Red Devil, I'm seeing something. Like I said, I do not go past a spot. If I have an issue, if I have a doubt, I will address it. And let me tell you, They've been hanging outside here by the hedge already a couple of hours and I had a once over and I missed that. It is so, so easy to miss these kinds of critters. Anyway, its neighbor is the pink beige. I have two of those. Pink beige is pretty robust and can kind of withstand the conditions that I have to provide. It's doing all right. The root growth is holding on. It's not spectacular, let's just say, but she's a vigorous orchid and there is enough, at least on the one lead, to make her survive the winter. She is very, very red, but her blooms also have pink in them. So that is part and parcel of it, plus of course, as I mentioned, the cold. She is not exactly happy, but I think she's going to pull through the winter. She looks promising. Moving on down the line, I've got my Gyrac Fly of Brown Spot, recently bloomed for me. I have a Blooms for You video to come yet, probably sometime in the future, and I've dedicated the Blooms, but the moment I filmed that video, I cut the spike off, and they are gracing my desk in a vase. The reason being, Tolumnias, we know, can branch, and they can bloom for a very, very long time, branching on the spikes over and over again. That is not a good idea for my Tolumnias this time of year. 
And that is why I cut the spikes off, even with the blooms looking gorgeous with no branching, none of that. But I want that big juicy growth to stay big and juicy and I can see that the leaves are starting to close in a little bit and that is also a stress related issue. It's too cold and the longer she gets a rest period as opposed to putting energy into blooming, she will be okay. She's going to pull through the winter bar any mistakes on my part when it comes to watering and not letting her dry out fast enough. A Tolumnia no ID, but named by Michael. I don't know what it is, but I like it. She is holding on. She has at least improved on the newest fan that was blooming recently. That leaf has stopped looking desiccated, so the roots are functioning even if they look a little bit sorry in the basket. But she is growing a new growth this time of year, and that is muy importante because that new growth will also bring a new root system. I think she is going to be okay for the winter, once again, as long as I don't make any mistakes. They are not all the same in their vigor, clearly, some are more vigorous than others, but for her, in the past, every time she started to have two or three fans, the back fan would die off, and it seems that at the moment she is true to that cycle, because the back fan only has one leaf left, but she's going to be okay. My second Tolumia Pink Brisht is a tail of two leads. One lead is going to be all right as far as I can see, even though stressed, but that is the name of the game throughout my Tolumnia collection at the moment. And the other lead is looking horrendous. There is near to nothing left in the structures. It looks like they've been press dried. There is a growth that tried to grow out. I'm wondering if that is going to produce roots. That's why I have not trimmed those back ends off at all. You never know, maybe she'll pull through and the back end will revive. At this point in time, I do believe that I only have one lead left in this basket of Tulumia Pink Brisht. But the front lead is growing a beautiful new growth right in the center, going back into the basket which is a relief because some of my Tolumnias are growing growth through the basket and yeah, that's always a bit of an issue when it comes to repositioning them. I have to destroy the basket to get them repositioned. But this growth of the pink brish is giving me hope. It's looking wonderful and it is bang smack in the middle of the basket and I'm very, very happy to see that. <laughs> Even though I may lose the back end, that's all right. As long as I keep part of this Tolumnia. We're coming to the more and more stressed Tolumnias. This is my Gyrac Red Sun. Really don't want to lose this one. I have a personal affinity for red Tolumnias. I don't mind the yellows. I don't mind the whites. But when it comes to the reds, I really don't want to lose them. This one is on the brink. The growth that it is growing, that is obvious to see. It's looking rather nice in comparison to the rest of the plant but it doesn't have any roots that I could consider even worth mentioning that they are functioning. However, I am hoping that it will hold on, that it will pull through, because at the moment, my red sun really is looking as though it is going to be a going, going, gone orchid. Fingers crossed, that won't be the case. The back end pretty much has nothing left to give, also paper thin. It looks like something you would find in the laboratory, where you have the botanicals and everything has been press dried for science and research sake. <laughs> Fingers crossed for red sun. My little firm Dalmatian is doing it again, starting a new growth during the worst conditions that she has for the entire year. It is going to be very, very cold for a substantial amount of time. Temperatures are going to drop indoors to 13 degrees Celsius. And I mentioned earlier, the margin is 16, maybe one or two nights, not for a long time. So my Dalmatian, we need to keep our fingers crossed. She doesn't have big structures, especially not when it comes to me. When I got her, her fans were a little bit bigger, but she always starts new growth during the coldest time of year in my climate. If she were in her happy place in the Caribbean, she wouldn't have these issues. She would be doing what she's doing now and the conditions would be perfect. So fingers crossed that my little firm Dalmatian is going to make it because she was very badly affected by the scale and I'm keeping a very close eye on anything and everything that I see spotting wise. 
because most of the scale were around her teeny tiny bases and on top of her roots back in the day. And that is a headache to remove on these tiny roots to get scale off of them. And you don't know if crawlers are doing more damage. So yeah, fingers crossed. I'm not going to let go of this one until she goes crispy brown and completely falls apart. But you can see this orchid is not happy. The next one down the row is my golden fire. I don't want to lose this one. She's beautiful. She's yellow. She sparkles. I love her, but things are not looking good. Her one lead has already deteriorated badly because I couldn't save the scale infestation. So it's just sort of falling apart within itself bit by bit. Her other lead is showing signs of a new growth, but there's really nothing left behind there. As far as reserves are concerned, where is she going to draw energy from to at least produce some roots? Hmm. Inquiring minds want to know. And I have a feeling that Golden Fire will not be with us for very much longer. Anyway, no harm, no foul. She can live on the tray and maybe she'll surprise us. Tolumnia Snow White. Oh boy. Yeah, you can see that she didn't really make it through the last winter very, very well. She couldn't really recover through the summer either because of the scale. Even though I'm treating her, there are no more reserves left in her either. She tried to grow a new growth. There are no viable roots in the basket that I can determine. I'm leaving her well alone. I do water her and I keep hope alive that maybe she'll rebound. I doubt that very, very much though. I'm just keeping it real here. Snow White looks like she is a goner. It's just a question of time. And next to her, I don't have an ID for this Tolumnia, but she's orange brown with flaring blooms. It's gorgeous. And you can see that this little Tolumnia is on her last leg not even last legs i'm not even giving her two legs there's one leg left and it is not just limping it is dragging yeah i think she's a goner but once again what harm is there to put her on the tray and then see what happens mm. but let's finish this video off with some positive news i thank you if you've made it this far don't want to leave you on a downer This is Tolumnia orange spread. I said I don't want to leave you on a downer and the first thing I show you is a yellowing leaf in the crown of the fan, the main fan that it came with. This one was given to me by Anonymous and I've been babying it. It's been inside, it's been getting plenty of light, not exposed to outside temperatures, but the indoor temperatures aren't that great either as mentioned earlier. But she is holding on, she is growing some beautiful roots that are hydrating wonderfully and I don't water her every single day because as long as the roots stay nice and green, she has plenty to go on. So I'm very careful with the watering on this one as well. And she has grown a beautiful new growth for us, which is not exactly the only source of the new root system, but it has contributed to it. Wow, what a relief. I'm not saying that this one is living on the edge and I'm not saying that we're past the most dangerous point, but we are at least seeing a lush fan. The leaves are looking nice open, they're looking beautifully hydrated and there isn't that much cold and anthocyan and stress as with the other ones, the older ones in my collection. This is her first winter with me and you can imagine she's probably shocked out of her mind thinking, what am I doing here? And I'm like, just bear with me. I'm going to help you <laughs> and I hope I can help her. This is my other Tolumnia from Anonymous. Thank you so much for these beauties. They are giving me hope. Thank you. I appreciate that. This one is Spotty. Tolumnia Gyrac Firm Spotty. And you can see that it has grown a beautiful new growth right out of what is like two fans. It came with one fan and then the other fan had a new growth ish starting that aborted that didn't develop much further and now it has grown a stonking new growth right out of the apex there leaning over what one would think precariously the orchid itself is growing beautiful roots there is roots in the dish at the bottom that helps me a lot because that's where i put the water in to avoid of course any kind of rot at the base 
lives together with the orange spread right by the door of my grow space where it gets lots of airflow, lots of sunshine. And you can see how beautiful that new growth is with the leaves wide open. This is what Tolumnia leaves should look like, not what we saw previously when they're super stressed. Anyway, I have a surprise with my little spotty because she is growing a spike. I cannot believe it. And I am going to let her grow that spike. I'm going to see how she copes with the conditions and if she can handle the spike. If need be, I am only going to let her grow that spike to the point that the buds separate from the spike and if I have to cut it off, that's when I will cut it off because the health of the orchid is paramount and then hopefully we can get another fan and then she can bloom for us. But I am so, so encouraged to see this new growth, all the roots in the pot. <sighs> if I lose many, many tolumnias, I have these two to fill their place, at least space-wise, not necessarily in my heart. Losing orchids is never a nice thing, but it is what it is. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this quick video. Give it a like. I know it wasn't that pretty of a video. There's a lot of stress to be seen. Nothing really beautiful and remarkable, but that is part and parcel of what's going on in my collection right now. And I thought, let's have a look at the Tolumnias because it's possible that three of them won't be around the next time we do an update. Like the video, share it if you wish. I would appreciate that support. And also, if you have not subscribed, that would be so appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel. And then if you have, please let me know that you are subscribed so that I can put you on a list and eventually one of these Tolumnias that will bloom will bloom for you. Really appreciate your time if you watch to the end because that is another way to support the channel. So if you're still here, watch to the end. Thank you so very much. I get to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.